at a pressure. So the temperature is 0 degrees Celsius uh, or 273 Kelvin and the pressure is 1 atmosphere. So we'll, so we'll do an example um, where you see STP. Okay, so in sample exercise 10.3 we have um, calcium carbonate uh, it's decomposing to form some calcium oxide and um, carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide uh, is our gas. That's going to be the gas. And um, the sample of calcium carbonate, I'm oh, sorry, the sample is decomposed and you're collecting uh, 250 mils in the flask. All right, and after decomposition is complete, the pressure is 1.3 atmospheres at a temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. So you want to write all that information down here. So just organize all of the um, everything that they're giving you. They give you a volume, 250 milliliters. Let's put that in liters right away. Um, they give you a pressure. They give you a temperature. Let's put the temperature in Kelvin. Um, we always know R. So if you're not sure how to how to approach the problem, you just write everything down. Uh, and always include R there. And uh, we only have we have you know the ideal gas law. Um, we have all the pieces we need except for N, right? And that's what they're asking for. How many moles of uh, carbon dioxide were generated? So P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles of gas, R is the uh, the gas constant here, and temperature uh, is T. And so look, if we look at the units of R, liters, atmospheres per mole Kelvin, we want to make sure that the volume's in liters, the pressure's in atmosphere, um, we have moles, and the, and the temperature is in Kelvin. If you don't have the right units, it's not going to work out properly. All right, so we have everything with n. You can uh, rearrange this equation to solve for n. Uh, just divide by rt, and uh, and then you're good to go. So if you just divide by rt over here. Divide by rt on the other side as well. Divide by rt. So you have PV over rt gives you n, and then we just plug everything in. 1.3 times 0.25 divided by 0.0821 times 304. And if you're if you're wondering why I just I just rounded 0.0821 instead of 0.0806, um, that's fine to do. I'll always give you R, so you don't have to memorize it. I'll, I'll give you that one. Uh, but after you work all that out, you get 0.013 moles, and the, those are moles of carbon dioxide. We only have one gas here, so that makes it nice and easy. Um, I chose two sig figs because I have you know two sig figs here. Um, two sig figs all around really. So that's all you want to have there. So work that out. You actually type in those numbers into your calculator make sure that you don't have any calculator errors. And uh, we'll do another example here. So sample exercise 10.4. Um, we have the gas pressure in an aerosol can is 1.5 atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius. Assuming that the gas obeys the ideal gas equation, what is the pressure when the can is heated to 450 degrees Celsius? Okay, so I have pressure 1, 1.5, and then they're asking about another pressure. Our first temperature here is 25 degrees Celsius. I'm going to put that in Kelvin right away. So 25 plus 273 gives me 298 Kelvin. And then they asked about a second temperature, 450 Celsius. So put that in Kelvin as well. So I have two temperatures, one pressure, and they're asking me for another pressure. Uh, they don't say anything about moles, uh, and they don't say anything about volume. So those must be held constant. So if I look at the ideal gas equation, I can derive a, a new equation, and you only have to do this once, uh, and then you'll know that equation. So I have PV equals nRT. If I put all my constants on one side, so n is a constant, r is a constant, and v is a constant, so I'm going to divide over here by v, right, to bring v to the other side, I'll have v over here, um, so that's what I did over here. So I have nR over v equals P over T. Um, so for this P over T, the first pressure, pressure over, t over temperature, that's some constant, because uh, all these guys are constant. So that has to equal another pressure and temperature pair. So I can derive this equation, P over T equals P over T. Done. So I plug everything in. As long as your temperature's in Kelvin, this only works when your temperature's in Kelvin. As long as temperature's in Kelvin, then you're, you're good to go. Pressure doesn't have to be in atmospheres. It's never wrong if it is in atmosphere. So atmosphere is a great tour would also work in this case. Um, your pressure units don't really matter, but your temperature has to be in, in Kelvin. Uh, as long as your, oh, sorry, I should, I should say, as long as your pressure units are the same on both sides. All right, so work that out and, and make sure you get uh, 3.6. So I had 1.5 over 298 is P2 
over 723, and so P2 second pressure is um, 3.6, which should make sense. Um, going back over here, so our, our temperature increase or our pressure also increase, so those are directly proportional. And we can try another one. So we have uh, an inflated balloon has a volume of um, six liters at sea level, which is uh, one at one atmospheric pressure, and it's allowed to ascend until the pressure is 0.45 atmospheres. Um, and during that time, during that ascent, the temperature falls from 22 to negative 21. Don't forget that negative sign there. Uh, and then they want you to find the volume at the final altitude. Okay, so they give you a whole bunch of numbers. Where do they all go? Um, so we have a volume of uh, 6 liters, okay, so we have 6 liters at this pressure, and the pressure is 1 atmosphere, and that's all of our original, um, our original conditions, so the first temperature goes with that set, and I'm going to convert that temperature to Kelvin, and then the second set here I have P2, so then at, at the higher altitude, um, the pressure is 0.45, I'm trying to find the volume there, and it goes with that pressure, and I know that the temperature went down. So the temperature was originally 22, and it went down to negative 21. So I put that in Kelvin here, and I have 252 um, Kelvin. So I'm going to drive a new equation again. Um, if, now, they didn't say anything about N. The number of moles, are that's not changing. So it's in a balloon, and it's not, it's not changing. Uh, so N and R are constant. If I put all my constants on one side, I have PV equals NRT. Um, I'm just going to divide by T over here and I get PV over T equals some constant, so that means P1V1 over T1 has to equal P2V2 over T2, so I have that written over here. So if P1V1 over T1 is a constant, then P2V2 over T2 has to be a constant as well. So I was able to derive this new equation. Um, this equation, is, this is called the combined gas law, and it turns out this, this um, you know, if you remember this one, P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2, if you don't care about pressure, then ignore pressure. And then you get V over T uh, equals V over T, which is Charles Law. If uh, they don't say anything about um, volume and volumes being held constant, then you can ignore volume, cross out your volumes, V1 would equal V2, and then you get P over T equals P over T, and that's what we used in the, um, the previous example. So I would remember this equation, and I would use I would use this if they give you, you know, two temperatures, two pressures, two volumes. If they give you two of any of those things, you're, you're going to want to use this equation. And then just kind of ignore, um, you know, if, they, if the temperature is being held constant, just cancel it. Mm -hmm. And then you get P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So you can get Boyle's Law and, and Charles Law um, out of this equation too. Just, you know, ignore any, if it only involves two variables, just ignore the other one that's being held constant. But in this case, all three variables are changing, so we have PV over T equals PV over T, so P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2, and so I plug everything in, um, and then I'm going to solve for V2, V2 is our unknown. So how do I solve for that? Um, you can plug in, you know, so one, one atmosphere, six liters, divided by 295, and then 0.45 times V2 over 252. You can multiply by 252, so I would multiply both sides by 252, 252, it's going to cancel here, so I'm going to multiply by 252 on this side as well, and then I want to divide by the 0.45, and that would isolate my V2, divide over here by 0.45, and I have that written down on the bottom a little bit. Um, neuter. A little tricky. Okay, so that's all done on the bottom there. And you get 11.3898. I would run that to two sig figs because I have two sig figs here. Remember that zero is not significant. I have two sig figs over here. I have two sig figs here. Two sig figs all around. Since we're multiplying over here, we just take the lowest number of sig figs.